Hi, I'm Jamie and welcome to Teachers Tech. I have 10 tips for you for the new Microsoft Outlook calendar. These are going to help with your productivity and organization. Just before we start, I just want to make sure you're in the new Microsoft Outlook. You can see up in the top right hand corner how I have mine toggled on. And these tips are based around the new Microsoft Outlook. I do have another video where I have the top 10 tips for Microsoft Outlook email. I'll put that in the link up above in the card so you can check those out too. This is dealing with more about the calendar. Let's get started with these tips. Tip number one will save you a little bit of time. Let's say you have a meeting like this one and you realize the half an hour that you have scheduled probably won't fit it all in, but I can't add any more that day. I want to schedule another time with the same people. Uh, I could go to another spot and create that meeting, add people again, but try this. Just right click on it and we have duplicate event. As soon as we do that, what will happen is all the information and the people in it will be there. All I'm going to have to do then at this point is just pick the day that I want and then after that just send it and you're going to notice it on the calendar with all the same invites. Tip number two is to add a work location. Here's an example. If I go to any of these dates and I just click right here, I can add a work location on that specific date and it's going to show up uh, for other people right here. How you can see it's turned to the office. But if I want to kind of schedule everything predetermined, I can set a schedule. This is going to open up the settings under the calendar. And you can see that I can go through and pick what days that I'm going to have things set and the time. So I could go through then and add where I'm going to be working from. So this is great in that hybrid working environment. If you don't want this to show it all in the calendar, you can turn this off here uh, and this will not show after I save it. They're all gone. Tip number three, and I really like this one. You can create a bookings page for yourself and then send it out to people. So here's a completed one that I have opened in a different account. They can see my schedule and when they find a time, let's say here, notice how the check mark disappear. They know that this is my only time to book that schedule. So at this point, they can go through, select it, hit next, and then sign up for that meeting. This is really great. So maybe you're a teacher or a small business owner and you're setting up those meetings and trying to let people find out when you're available. Let me show you how you create this. So I'm in calendar. I'm just going to go to the calendar settings under view. And when I open this up, just make sure you're under calendar here. Select calendar again, and you're going to get the option of bookings with me. Choose what calendar or what account this is going to go to and then click on this link. After you've done this, you can actually add this to your email signature so a person could just click on that and then open up that same thing I just showed you. But click on this and you're going to have this open up right here, this booking page. Now you can go through and do a little bit of customization if you wanted a different banner. You can go through and choose the banner through here. But this is what shows up. So this is what I already showed you in the demo. There's this office hours. If I click on this, I can go through and edit it. Maybe a different description, category. I can make this private, change my times uh, to different ones. And you can see all the customization that you can do to set this up. And then there's the advanced options. There is the share up here, but you can also go to the share up here to send it out. I wanted to point out you can create more of these. So if I hit the plus here, you're going to be able to create a brand new one that you can go through and set up and then hit save. So at this point, I could go through and share this in a few different ways. Since I have only the one here, I could share and copy link or share through email, or I could do it right through here if I click. So if I go and say I want to share from here, I could go here and then uh, just do email. And I'm going to add a person in here. And then you'll be able to see when I open up their email. So this is what they see on their end, book a meeting. They would click on here and they would get to that same page that I showed you before. And it also prompts them to create their own booking page. Tip number four can really help you save a lot of confusion with others when trying to plan a meeting for the best time. You can create a poll to ask them when is the best time. Let's go ahead and create one. Now I'm just going to go and create a new event here. And once I do that, uh, I'm going to go and you can see the dates already in here as the 15th. 
I'm going to add a title and I'll just call this meeting and I need to add some people to here. So if I just go and add at least one, I'll add one more. So as soon as I do that, I can schedule a poll. If you don't have any people in it, uh, it will say that you have to add people. So as soon as I go schedule a poll, notice it says no one is available. Well, that's because the time, the date here. So I'm going to change the date and let's go here, the 17th. Now, if I look at it, uh, the availability here, I'm going to choose some times and I can select multiple to when this could be uh, the meeting and then they can vote on this. So if I go ahead and hit next and create poll, you notice how I can do some customization of this and even put a location or teams meeting on this. Uh, I have all these options that I can go through even, even do a little bit more of the settings. I'm going to go ahead and hit create and then let me check that other email after I send it to those people. So here's the email that I just sent out after creating that scheduling poll. I'm going to go ahead and hit vote. And this screen comes up and you'll see where they can go. So if there is a time that they like, or they can even put something that they prefer in here or propose another time. But this way is going to really help you find that exact time what works the best for everybody. For tip number five, I want to show you how you can add multiple time zones to your calendar so it makes it easier to schedule with different people in different time zones. Now, I'm going to go from month view and I can choose a different one, either day or week. If I click on week, notice I have the time here and this is set to what I'm on right now. I can right click in here and I'm going to get different time zones. I can edit the time zone. You can also do this to go up to settings where we were before and go under calendar and then you're going to get to the same place for the time zones. Now I'm going to go and just add another time zone. So maybe if I was connecting with somebody in New York, I can start typing uh, that in and I'm going to show it in calendar. Notice I can come back and remove it as well. If I hit save now and just close out of here, I can go and when I'm booking, I can see what the time will be for there and for here. So it just makes it easier to be thinking ahead when you're booking these meetings, what will be the best fit. Tip six is super quick tip. Let's say you have your email open, but on your second monitor, you want to have your calendar open. You can just quickly go over to calendar, right click and open in a new window. So this will pop open the calendar here and then you can take this window here and move it to where you would like. Tip number seven. Did you know you could copy a loop component from Microsoft Loop just by going here and copy and then go over to your Outlook create an event and paste this into the description. So if you're unfamiliar, I'm going to paste this. If you're unfamiliar what a loop component is, they're an interactive component that will update automatically across everybody wherever it lives. So it will be an instant update. So in this case, if there was uh, different things to mark off, if it's completed, if I put completed here, and go back over here, it will show up completed here instantly. And it's across whoever that is shared with. I do want to point out, this can be also just added to an email. You can paste this in. It will pop up here and it'll go to everybody's email. And even when you're inside an email, you can go up and see that there's loop components that you can start them from here. Or even when I'm in calendar, at the very bottom, there's loop components that you can start from here. If you're looking to learn more about Microsoft Loop, I have a beginner's tutorial on that that I'll put the uh, up in the card and down below in the description, the link. Tip number eight, I want to show you how you can clear your calendar and stop any invites to meetings while you're away. So if I go to calendar settings here and I want you to go to accounts this time and go to automatic replies. Let's say you're going to be away. Make sure you have your right account. I'm going to turn on automatic replies. I'm going to say I'm going to be gone during a week here. So I'll pick just some dates that'll be 
gone from the 15th to the 22nd. Notice I have some more options. I can block my calendar for this period, automatically dec decline new invitations for that events, and decline and cancel my meetings during this period. So if you want any of these on, you can just go ahead and select them. Now notice you get a few more different options on how uh, you want the replies. So if I drop down, we can create a message to include in reply, or we can go through. So make sure that you're not getting into invited to meetings that you're not gonna be there for. Be productive by sharing your calendar with others. So let's say on this calendar right here, this extraterrestrial Earth one, I want to be able to share it with other people so they can see where everything is, even if my own events that I put on it. So I can do this in a couple different ways. If I hover over, I have the ellipsis here where I can go to more options and I can go to sharing permissions and you get this right here. I can also, in calendar settings, you're going to notice that under calendar, we have shared calendars. This is going to go to the same one. So if I drop down, I can choose my calendar and hit share. Who do I want to share it with? So I can go through and add the people that I want to share it through, whether it be your organization. But the nice thing is, what do you want them to be able to do? view when you're busy, view titles and location, all details, or even edit. So you can set up this calendar on how you need it to work for you and your team. Tip number 10, reply to an email with a meeting. So if I pick this one right here, take a look up in the ribbon, we have meeting. I can just click on it and it's gonna automatically reply with the meeting. So notice, if I go down, the person's already in here, so I can go through and set up this meeting and then just send it. So I can do the suggested times, send it, and then that meeting will be set and the other person will be invited. Now I have three quick bonus tips for you. The first one is right here, the filter. So the filter allows you to see exactly what you want to see. So I have it under all. But let's see if I wanted to see from meetings where I'm an attendee. And you get to see all the different things that you can switch it from. Then only this is going to show up. You could go through and pick a lot of different things. If you have things with categories in it, you can go ahead and pick what category and those categories will show up. Next, I want to show you how to create a calendar, maybe your favorite sports team or holidays by adding calendar and look right here. So if I was following a favorite sports team, I could pick what league uh, that I'm interested in, let's say the NFL, and then I could go through and pick a team. And as soon as I do that, I can leave here and you're gonna notice that they're on my calendar. Well, it's the end of the season here and this was their last game. So this shows it on, but during the season, it's a nice way to track all the different ones and they have all the different leagues. And lastly, I just wanna show you another quick way you can add your emails to your calendar. I'm in my email, I'm just gonna open up my day and I'm under calendar right here. So if I go ahead and take an email, I can just drag it over and notice it says add as an event. I can just drop it and then all the customizations to create that event are right there with the correct people that are gonna be invited to it. So at this point, I can just go ahead and hit send. I hope these Outlook calendar tips have been helpful for you. If you have some other ones, I'd love to hear what they are. Just write them down below in the description so I can check those out. And those other videos that I mentioned, take a look at those ones if you want to kind of dive deeper into Outlook and Microsoft Loop. Thanks for watching this week on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.